Hello and welcome to Running the Table, the podcast where we run through everything on the table in the world of sports. And we're here with the final conference to cover in our conference breakdowns, my conference that I know and love, the Big Ten. Uh, If you've seen more of our videos, you know I've gone pretty in detail breaking down each one of these teams in the series Boom Buster Believable. Because Uh, Tim, you're insane and you covered not eight, not ten, all 14 teams. All 14 so you know, we, we made it all the way through, but uh, here today we're going to look at where all these teams stand now at the end of the regular season as they prepare for the tournament. Drew, you ready? Let's run it, baby! You know it. So we're starting off here with the number one seed in the Big Ten tournament, the Purdue Boilermakers. So Purdue's been fighting to stay on top lately with a couple of losses and mostly close Uh, wins, but they have had some silver linings in some of those performances. Ever since the second loss to IU, the defense has looked different and largely more intense, you know, playing with more emotion, Uh, starting specifically with Brandon Newman, who has been a man possessed on the defensive end, notching three steals in their uh, past game against Illinois, and just looking way more, you know, involved and engaged in the game. Um, And he's made a big, big difference. Um, obviously they still have Zach Eady, who is just got named big 10 player of the year and still will most likely get national player of the year. Um, although his numbers have, you know, slightly dipped down a bit here, uh, lately as, um, Purdue's been getting some scoring out of other ways. Um, but he's still obviously a force to be reckoned with, but Purdue's struggles really come from the high pressure defenses, both with zone presses, um, and in half court man-to-man defense, um, when they when teams get up in their grill, it makes it harder for them to get the ball into Edie in decent post position, um, which makes them easier to double. And then Purdue is forced to play the kickout game where Purdue has struggled to find consistent three point shooting this year, um, averaging just short of 33% from deep. Yeah, I think 22 and one speaks for itself to start the season, but things have definitely taken Been much a turn more challenging for lately. Purdue. Losing four of six isn't great, and teams are starting to figure out the Boilermaker blueprint that we mentioned in the Purdue Boom Buster Believable, and they're going to need to make a few more adjustments in the Big Ten tournament. I mean, Zach Eady, obviously, he's a monster, there's no doubt, but in order to win a national championship, which is the goal, it's going to take more. One of those young guards in either Fletcher Lawyer, Braden Smith, or Mason Gillis really needs to step up and take control of the perimeter because that's an element that Purdue really needs to solidify their offense. Absolutely. And specifically for Fletcher Laurier, it has been heard that he's been playing with a bit of like a calf issue lately. So hopefully he can get fully healthy and try to get himself back on track heading into the tournament. Love that guy. Uh, Great name. But next we're going on to Northwestern at the two seed, which, wow, you talk about the Big Ten Conference and seeing Northwestern at the two line. What a story. Um, What a story they've been. What a story they have been. Um, they've, They've been looking super hot. Um, in the month of February until they came to a screeching halt uh, with three straight losses to Illinois, Maryland, and Penn State in overtime, but they still find themselves as the number two seed. Um, their guard combo is still incredible with Boo Booey and Chase Audij. Um, they they very much lead the, the spearheading of that offense, and those two don't turn the ball over very much um, as a team. Um, they, they are very good on, on the, uh, turnover side of things. Um, but their, their main issue is where is their offense going to come from outside of Boo Booey and Chase Adige? Lately, you've seen guys like Brooks Barnheiser step up and make some buckets. Um, but you can only really count on Bowie and Audige in any given game or so it seemed lately. Um, that's going to be the question is, can they outscore, um, opponents and keep up their defensive pressure because they still defend the ball very, very well, which uh, was a big reason for their success during the middle of the season um, and whether or not they can do the combination of both to beat some of these these better teams down the stretch, especially in neutral court situations. Yeah, like you talk about their story. They came out of nowhere this year and they made a statement. They're not going to be pushed around in the Big Ten. They have been able to hang with the big dogs. They have statement wins sweeping IU and beating Purdue. And you mentioned their defense. That is their calling card. It's led by their guard play, Chase Adij, Boo Booey, and to a lesser extent, Ty Berry. He's also really good. And they just make life miserable on the perimeter. But yeah, outside of Bowie and Adij, who's it going to be that's going to step up and be that third option? That's going to be very telling for Northwestern in the Big Ten tournament. And moving on, we've got the third seed in the Indiana Hoosiers. Um, The Hoosiers obviously have made a massive turnaround in their season from sort of the issues that they had in the beginning and middle of the season. Um, And they've found some balance with the continued continued emergence of Jalen Huchifino and, of course, Trace Checks and Davis just playing better and better as the season's gone on. Um, They play high-pressure defense and can score in various different ways, whether it be Trace going for 25-plus or some of their three-point shooters getting hot. 
Um, the emergence of, of Jalen Hochefino has been nothing short of incredible with with some of the, the games that he's had. Namely, of course, that performance against Purdue. And he's had a we lot also of great games that down one, the stretch. If you want to watch Absolutely. that, we have both IU Purdue games to recap. Just a little plug. Yes, and he's and he's looked absolutely incredible. But you know he is still a freshman, and he has shown um, some sh- shaky stretches. Uh, you know, having some of his on and off games, especially on the offensive side of the floor. Um, but as a team, Iowa has continued to shoot the three ball better and better. Now averaging thirty seven point six percent from three as a team, um, and a lot of those role guys are really what makes IU go or not in terms of what's going to be you know that one extra push that gets them over the edge against these teams um, that are you know right up around their level in terms of talent um but in terms of their weaknesses the problem with indiana is they're just very on and off against purdue they look they've looked like one of the most motivated intense teams in the country but then they go and lose by 15 at michigan state and get thrashed by 22 at home against iowa so what ter- what, what version of them are we going to see they um it's it's very very confusing to me because they have all the talent and all of the guys to if they just bring that type of intensity any given day you know they can play with basically any team in the country um but it's very confusing of of what we're going to see out of them and the one other thing is they could definitely use some improvement um from the free throw line as a team they do not shoot the the free throws very well well that's what i got from indiana is that on and off especially over the last few games because in their last six games they've traded wins and losses literally going loss win loss win loss win and the team runs through Trace Jackson Davis. He leads the Hoosiers in every major stat category except for steals, but he's maybe a steal or two away from leading the Hoosiers in that yeah. as well. He's so active. He's so active. He's a true superstar, and he's everywhere. And when Indiana follows his lead and plays in rhythm and they're at their best – I see a deep NCAA tournament run for this team. It is definitely possible, but like you said, on that off day, it's not too great. You have that dichotomy of absolutely smacking Purdue in the mouth in Westloff and then playing Michigan State and Iowa and getting blown out of the building. So it's which Hoosier team is going to show up. But moving on, we've got Michigan State um, at the fourth spot and they've put up some really solid performances as of lately handling IU pretty easily at home um, losing in one of the craziest comebacks at Iowa which that if you watch the end of that game that was oh my god insanity all time um, yeah that is no an all-timer kidding. and after that they then rattled uh rattled off two wins to end the regular season um some of their top scoring guys especially in Tyson Walker and Joey Hauser Tyson Walker is a menace I can pretty confidently say that I think that he's the strongest point guard in the Big Ten right now, just with the way that he's playing, the confidence that he's playing at, and the way that he's shooting the ball. As a team, Michigan State has been the hottest three-point shooting team in the country, um, with guys like Tyson Walker, Joey Hauser, and even Jaden Akins just absolutely torching teams recently. They're up to 40% from deep, um, and they really have shown no signs of slowing down. Um, but in terms of weaknesses, they they are still susceptible to struggling against big men. They still have a very small roster, although they did do a pretty good job at home recently um, containing Trace Jackson Davis and keeping him off the offensive glass um, in that win over Indiana. But it's just whether or not they're going to be able to put all these things together game in and game out against some of these teams, not only in the Big Ten tournament, but in the NCAA tournament as well. Watching Michigan State, you it's just... You love playing your favorite sidebar game of who's going to step up tonight because that's just Tom Izzo basketball where they play as a unit, as a team, and no part is bigger than the whole. They've had their ups and downs, but they're still a really talented squad where you don't know who's going to beat you. Not knowing who your best man can be a detriment, but in Michigan State's case with a coach like Tom Izzo, they definitely use that to their advantage. You mentioned the size. They're not necessarily as big as some other teams, but they shoot the three ball really well. And if you don't prepare for them and the way they play that brand of team basketball they can punch you in the mouth and that's just tom is a ball coming up next we've got the iowa hawkeyes 
um, who have been just absolutely electric um, on offense this season. They they have scores all over the floor. They can light it up on any given night, although they did just lose a frustrating game to end the regular season at home against Nebraska. But you can never count the Hawkeyes out because um, they'll jump on you in a flash. Uh, led by Chris Murray, obviously he has really stepped out of the shadow of his older brother, and he is 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 really just picked up right where he left off, um, averaging over twenty points per game. Um, he is obviously their their leading scorer and and definitely you know leading man on the team. But they have scoring options all around the court. Um, their three point shooting is really lightning in the bottle, and it can strike at any moment, as shown in their insane comeback and overtime win against Michigan State recently. Um, and they have guards who can score from all around. Guys like uh, Tony Perkins and Peyton Sanford have also recently stepped up and been have very big roles in making this Iowa team run. Um, but for their, what they struggle with is they still lack significant size although philip fabracha does do a pretty good job scoring at his height um and they just do they just don't defend well um we've seen in the past the iowa teams be be very high intense like high speed defense but they just don't really have that this year i'm not exactly sure why um but they're a team that game in and game out they pretty much rely on outscoring their opponent in any way possible and, and we know very well how that can come back to bite you Iowa is the ultimate boom or bust team in the Big Ten, and the best way that I would describe them is all gas, no breaks. They play fast, they shoot threes, and they score a lot of points. They're, they're, but they, they're about as run and gun as it gets. But they also give up a lot of points. I mean, you look at the countless examples littered around the scores of Iowa putting up 85, 90, 100, 110 points, but... Most of those wins are by single digits. It's yeah. something that can work to Iowa's advantage, but when you're stuck in just shootouts every single game, it's something that can really hurt you. And that's been Iowa's brand of basketball, not just this year, but for the past two years. And it's something that won them the Big Ten tournament, but it also yep. got them bounced by Richmond in the first round in last year's tournament. And that is very much the case with Iowa this year. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to figure out where to place them. Um, but coming up next, we've got Maryland. Um, and the big talk with Maryland is they're just not good away from home. Um, with a whopping 2-9 and nine record on the road, um, which all of those losses come in the Big Ten. Um, so on a neutral court here in the Big Ten tournament, Jeez. I just don't know what version we're going to get. That's um, disgusting. But it's, 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 it's hard to tell, but I can't say I have a ton of confidence in them. Obviously, they're they're led by Jameer Young, who's averaging over 16 points per game, and he's you know a, still a very good big shot maker. Um, but outside of him, they kind of have a bunch of guys who is kind of a revolving door of scoring of who is going to you know make the shots on any given day. But they are still a very balanced team um, with both offensive efficiency and defensive efficiency being rated at 31st in the country. Um, and lately their defense has been playing at a pretty high level, but their offense has been struggling mightily. Um, I don't know what's in the water at College Park, but Maryland does not like playing away from home. It's Michael's secret stuff. You know, I don't I don't know what it is, but uh, it's it's going to be interesting to see what Maryland can do on a neutral court versus an away court because mm, they haven't like playing away from home. You know, it, that, that was really nice of you to say that about Maryland. And you know me, I'm not the hating type. I'm out. I'm out on Maryland. They stink away from home. They are awful and they are terrible. And how many games in the rest of the is. season do they get at College Park? none zero and i cannot ignore their road record and away from home they suck i'm out i'm out on maryland i will not be surprised they're projected an eight seed they're they're gone first round exit unless the game is in like on the east coast somewhere in the eastern seaboard <laughs> yeah if it's somewhere on the eastern seaboard then maybe i'll give them a chance but if it's anywhere else they're losing i do not care yeah. And I'm not normally the hating type. I'm not. <laughs> you feel pretty strongly about this one. Yeah, no, out on Maryland. <laughs> they stink. With the way they've been playing lately, I don't necessarily blame you. <laughs> uh, coming up eh, next. Sorry, Terps fans. No, I'm not. 
Up next, we've got the Illinois fighting Illini, and th they've just been very spotty lately. Um, they've showed flashes of brilliance and just looking plain dull at other times. They almost completed a very impressive second half comeback in their last game of the regular season at Purdue, but offensively, the wheels kind of just fell off at the end. Um, still, they're led by their two big transfers this year, Terrence Shannon Jr. and Matthew Meyer at se just over 17 points per game and 13 points per game apiece. Um, they've, they provide lightning offense when they get hot, but the team really does run through them. Um, so if they're off, Illinois is definitely hurting as a team. They defend pretty well, which helps fuel their offense when they get out in the fast break rather than going up against set defenses, but they do turn over the ball too much and they don't shoot free throws very well. Um, outside of Terrence Shannon Jr. And Matthew Meyer, nobody really shoots the three ball all that well either. So it's like, okay, all the, all signs point to, you've got to have those two guys carrying you or else the offense just isn't going to be there. They're pretty boring. Not much is exciting or impressive about them other than Matthew Meyer, the midnight menace with a caffeine addiction, which is <laughs> solely why he's become my new favorite player oh on Illinois, if not the entirety of the Big Ten, because for a boring team, that's a lot of personality. I mean, but you can't really sleep on them either. Because no, they, they, they still have the ability to beat anybody. Because but. they're boring, people don't expect them to do much. But if they catch you lacking, they'll jump on you and absolutely punch you in the mouth. So don't sleep on the Illini. I know Matthew Meyer doesn't sleep at night. You know, when you ingest that much money, you know what? Maybe he's going for the uh, the NIL deal with Monster. I haven't heard any word on it yet, but, you know, he's trying his best. Moving on up next, we've got the Michigan Wolverines. Um, and Michigan has been a major victim to close games here recently, losing their last two games in overtime. One Hail of them being the a double overtime victors. Loss. Just, just falling uh, short there, but it, they have still been playing pretty good basketball. Nonetheless, um, Hunter Dickinson is still, you know, Hunter Dickinson averaging 18 points per game and nine rebounds per game. He is still the heart and soul of that team. Um, the offense still runs through him, but the difference lately is that actually has been accentuated pretty well by guard play in the second half of the season with guys like Jet Howard, Kobe Bufkin and Doug McDaniel stepping up big time to help on the offensive side of the ball but they're not a great defensive team. And that's really what hurts them uh, most in some of these close games, as well as their free throw shooting. You see these games in, in overtime. I know, but it's, if you look at even their, their games recently, you've got three. You don't need to justify games. it, Tim. It's important. One of them we being just... a win, two of them being losses. With, with like half of these teams that we've covered in all of the conference breakdowns, you have mentioned that they're either a really good free throw shooting team or a really bad free throw shooting team. And that's what's so weird to me. It usually is one or the other. There are very few like average free throw shooting teams. They're either like 70% or below or like 77%. Yeah, I don't that's know. It's very weird. It, um, no, it's, but... it's strange. But Michigan is doing the exact same thing they did last year where they're just outside the bubble and then they start to crawl their way back into the picture. And they could and still then... surprise just about anybody. So, and yeah, the next really thing you know, the they catch fire and shock the world and, and make the dance. You know, they it would have been a lot easier for Michigan if they had just won those two overtime games at All Illinois and Indiana. A couple more free throws. But, Tim, that's not the Michigan way. All right. True Michigan. <laughs> gotta men, keep it interesting. <laughs> true Michigan men make things difficult on themselves for absolutely no reason. Because <laughs> doing it the easy way is for chumps. And if there's one thing we know about Michigan, they ain't no chumps. Michigan men find a way. Stamp it, book it, trademark it, whatever you get there. Um, but yes, Michigan is certainly a fun and interesting team to watch if you like getting frustrated. Coming up next, we've got Rutgers, uh, who has really been on just a massive, serious decline, especially offensively in the second half of the season. And that has really, really, really hurt them. Um, they're still led in points by Cliff Omari uh, at 13 and a half points per game. Um, but outside of him, yeah. Um, they, they're still an incredible Cam Spencer has team. a few game Don't winners and he's a dog. Yes. The, the, their, their big highlight on offense has been Cam Spencer. He is the only guy that can really shoot worth a damn um, sitting at 43% from three. Um, but other than him, they have lost all sense on how to score the ball. Yeah. Um, they don't shoot free throws well. And like I said, Cam Spencer, they don't have anybody from the outside. So if you don't have anybody from the outside, it's really just, are, are what are they going to do? 
to get on offense other than Cliff Omaruri pick and rolls and post ups. Like, what? Yeah. Where is it going to come from? And lately, they have not found an answer to that. Yeah, they have Cliff and they have Cam. You have your really good big man and your really good perimeter shooter. And other than the that, off with Caleb McConnell and Paul Mulcahy has been so weird to me though because those guys have been so solid over the last like year and a half. Yeah, just I don't know. Off. Look, you know their defense is going to show up. They always do. That is that is Rutgers basketball. Yeah. But the real question is, can their offense keep up? And lately, they just plain haven't. Um, but moving on, we've got the Penn State Nittany Lions. Um, and they are a very, very interesting team. Um, after a rough stretch in early February, Penn State has sort of righted the ship, winning five out of their last six, including a comeback last second win at home against Maryland to end this, their regular season. Um, Jalen Pickett is still as impressive as ever um, at 18 points per game. He's a borderline All-American. I've said this before. He is super, super impressive. He's really and good. And the three-point shooting all around the board is just incredible. Um, shooting just short of 39% from deep. Um, and they've got guys all over the court at any given moment who can shoot it at a high clip. Um, and with some of that guard experience, they're also really good about limiting turnovers, turning it over only 8.8 times per game. But their issue is mostly on the defensive end um, where they don't defend very well. Um, their team is definitely more built for offense than defense. Um, and that has come back to bite them when their shooting isn't there in full force. Yeah, they're just stupid guard heavy. Offensively, it is the Jalen Pickett show. He is a true superstar. But can the rest of the team behind him step up and carry the rest of the load? And for a team like Penn State that has been playing jump rope with that bubble line being in, out, in, out, in, out, yeah. it, it, it could be the difference between getting a bid or not at all. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to watch to see what they're able to do. But rounding out the Big Ten for us is Wisconsin at 16 and 11 currently. Um, they sit at a 12 seed in the Big Ten tournament, but yet find themselves as a bubble team, which is practically unheard of. That's kind of wild, dude. Find a bubble team in the NCAA tournament playing on the Wednesday in the first, first round of games in the Big Ten tournament. You just don't see this very often. But for the Badgers, they're really the story of how the mighty have fallen. Um, they once found themselves towards the top of the Big Ten um, at the beginning of the season, but they they just have massively dropped off lately. Um, they haven't won two games in a row since the turn of the calendar year. And that's largely because of their offense has kind of just completely disappeared. Well, yeah. Um, they still defend the basketball well, and that's what keeps them in close games down the stretch. Um, and strangely enough, on paper, they shoot the ball pretty well from three, shooting on paper, five percent from three. But yeah, you're right. It sure has not felt that way as of lately. Um, the big question is, where is their offensive production going to come from? Is it Chucky Hepburn, who has, as their leading scorer, only averages 12.2 points per Tim. game? offensive purgatory they yeah, fall it, right in there they fall right in it because their next three guys your after offensive that, bottom line yeah right right after those top the, that uh top guy and chucky hepburn you've got three guys who average between 11 and 12 points per game which as we mentioned is just kind of a killer for most teams um so as of lately they really just don't know how to score and it has shown a lot yeah, they're just another team right on the bubble, so they need to tread carefully because they duh. need to win some games. But Tim, if they lose to Ohio State, they're done. Oh yeah, no. and end 100%. of story. End of story. You can't lose to Ohio State in the first round of the of the Big Ten tournament and expect to make it in the position that Wisconsin is in. They are in a win or done situation here. That's for sure. But after going through all of these teams, we take a look at now who is our pick to win the Big Ten tournament, Drew? You know what? No, Tim, this is your conference. I'm going to throw it back to you. Who's going to win the Big Ten tournament and why is it Purdue? You know, you know me pretty well. Um, obviously, uh, being a big Boilermaker fan, I do have to put my belief in the Boilers here. And of part of that, do. in my opinion, part of wow. that, in my opinion, as well. Tim's picking Purdue to win the Big Ten tournament. Who would have seen this coming? Part of it is it'd be a great story because first of all, I do like their matchups going into the Big Ten Championship game. I strongly believe that they can, no, I don't want to say pretty easily because in the Big Ten Tournament, who knows, but they can absolutely beat uh, the winner of this Rutgers-Michigan matchup mm -hmm. um, on Thursday. And if they win that game, they will play the winner of Michigan State versus whoever they end up playing. And if that ends up being Michigan State, I obviously love the way that Purdue matches up against Michigan State. And boy, 
if we were to get a Purdue versus IU Big Ten championship game for a round three to either oh, have the season sweep boy. or for the Purdue oh, revenge boy. game, I would love nothing more to see that. I think I would find a way to find to, to go to Chicago for that game. I don't care how much money I have to pay. <laughs> I'll come with. Screw it. That's going to be a fun game. You can't I'm miss that. But who but, you got? Oh, dear, Tim, you're going to hate me for this. <laughs> <laughs> this team has stepped up and answered yeah. the bell at yeah. the biggest moments this season. And that's really what counts. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah, why I'm going to pick the <laughs> Hoosiers. Yeah. They have showed up with that swagger. They've punched teams in the mouth. Their fan base needs to be insufferable. They need to play loud. They need that Hoosier ball, that brand, that Bob Knight throwing the chair across the court, the loud, boisterous, I don't give a damn who you are. We're going to come in, kick your door down, and take everything you own mentality of basketball. And when Indiana is like that, and trust me, they have been. Tim, you saw it firsthand. You know, It's good for the Big Ten, and it's better for college oh, yeah. basketball overall. All they need to do is get out of their own way and play the good brand of Indiana basketball that they've shown they can play. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we both pick teams that have kind of been inconsistent in their own way in the, in this last couple of games. But of show season. me a consistent Big Ten team, Tim. Exactly. And that's what makes this, you know, a complete adventure. If you think that you want to take this Big Ten tournament and predict it correctly, don't because you won't. Um, yeah, but... you better have a, have some kerosene and a lighter ready for your Big Ten tournament bracket because be prepared to light it on you fire. Have no by idea like Friday. what's going to happen. We can act like we do. You have no idea what's going to happen. Um, but that's all we've got for today. This was the last of our conference breakdowns of the Power Six. It's going to be a blast to watch all of these conference tournaments unfold and see who comes out on top. Uh, but on the channel, we've got so much content out for you between all of the college basketball content we've been up to, to all of the NFL season, and so much more. But if you want more from us, like and subscribe. And until next time, peace. Please give me a Purdue IU Big Ten Championship. That would be so much fun. Purdue IU Part 3 for the, the electric people. electric boogaloogaloogaloo? <laughs> I don't think there's a name for that.